There we go. So um, when you're when you're building when you're doing static routes, right? Who is the routing protocol? What is the routing protocol? Who figures out where stuff goes? Oh, admin. Yes, the network admin. Oh, yeah. So you have to code in. You have to tell it. I want to go to this server. I want to do this. I want to go to this place. You have to tell it all of that. If you don't have a catch all category, the vast majority of your data won't go anywhere, right? So this is the catch all category. It meaning if it's not one of these, send it to the gateway of last or the gateway of last or the default gateway. You have to have one of these. If it doesn't, then you can only go to this IP address, that IP address, and this IP address. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Christoph, tracking. Okay. Can you can you use YouTube as an example? I mean, yes. Okay. I'm not going to though. Like in this. A a YouTube video for what? Uh, you just go on YouTube. And you just want to use YouTube as an example. Yeah. Sorry. What well, oh, you wouldn't want to use a website like YouTube because YouTube is spread over a bunch of different servers and a bunch of different IP addresses. So you'd have to know all of YouTube's IP addresses. So this, so static routing is more for internal stuff. I want to get to, I want to leave my network going through a certain port using a certain if you have more than one i um um uh if you have more than one isp so we actually have two we have ena which is our main and then i think we have comcast which is our backup um if all of all of our traffic goes out of ena but if we wanted to for whatever reason we could give it a static route to say no 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 no, we're going to go out of comcast because we want to use this port as well um you wouldn't want to use it for your computer at home you that's just you could but it'd be kind of lame to try to go to YouTube or try to go to Yahoo because those are almost every website has more than one IP address so it just wouldn't be feasible plus if they ever change the IP address you would have to know that change otherwise you wouldn't be able to get to it so static is the more people the more computers the more whatever you have the more complicated it gets and the more time goes into maintaining it because if let's say this computer dies, right? Our server dies and we redo it and we give it a new IP address. Every routing table that's static that goes to that server, we'd have to redo. So you don't want to have a lot of static routes for everything just because it takes a long time to recalibrate and or um, to update the routes, right? This is why you want to do, and we're going to get into dynamic routing protocols. And what those are, those are all automatic. Right, so you have different ones that do different things, and that's what your exercise is. You guys are going to research those and talk to us. Um, so you want it's most of the stuff you want to do, unless you are really hard and you kind of know you really know what you're doing, and you want to be a very specific way. You want to use, um, unless you're really good with networking and you got all the stuff you know. Unless you know what you're doing really, really, really well, you always want to use dynamic and automatic configuration for most things. So just static routes is something you gotta know because one of your exercises will be, look at this routing table and tell me my IP address. So that's a fun exercise. Um, configuring static routes. Like again, so all of this is how, what you would do. You see how it says router configuration? It means you're in, you're logged into a router and you're in the config um, command prompt line basically. So. Again, we don't have any of that, so I can't really, nor is it, yeah. So we're just gonna wait till we have the router, hopefully by Thursday. Um, so we're gonna skip that. Static routes. Oh, here we go, dynamic routing protocol. So this is what, I, like I was talking about, um, this is automatic, so you don't have to configure anything. Anytime an IP address changes, it automatically updates. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah, um, so there's a couple, oh, that was weird, that was really weird, sorry. Um, it's kind of had like, wait, what am I supposed to be talking about right now? Um, so there's a couple things that go into uh, dynamic road routing protocols. One is the information that's between the routers, so those are the actual packets. Then you have um, what happens when the 
updated routing information is exchanged. So that what that is is, um, let's say a server goes down on the way to YouTube, or a router goes down. The fact that it's down gets sent to all the adjacent routers, and then those routers send it back, and they update your routing tables. Some routing tables are like ten thousand entries long. It's insane. Because they just they're going to a bunch of different. They're going to all the websites. All they, the, they memorize everything. Uh, the routers they don't memorize it. They just it gets they figure it out basically. So they've been programmed to when a uh, so basically to record yeah. where the packet goes yeah. and once it makes it there the information gets passed um, from router to router to router and then they have they add to their routing table uh, does that make sense oh well, that's why when you have so many go at the same time the table gets exploded no so a routing table isn't a list of packets that are going anywhere yeah. it's basically a list of addresses Okay. So when you want to get to YouTube, you're going to go to you're going to go to router one two three four. If you want to go to YouTube, you're going to go to one seven one nine. Okay. Right? Any packet that wants to go to YouTube goes follows these this this route. Okay. Oh, and then so it, that's route one two three four. Let's say four goes down. Well, three. So we have actually I have it right here. So right here, you guys see this is. These are my routers, this is my computer. Oh, I'm erasing. This is my computer. These are routers. And this is YouTube. YouTube. Oh, jeez, I can't spell. Why O U T U B YouTube? Okay. So we're gonna go, we'll use yellow. So it goes here, and then it goes there, and then it goes there, and then it goes there to get to YouTube, right? Yeah. So let's say this router goes down for maintenance. Okay, well now we can't go that direction. Whoa, where are YouTube? All right, we can't go there, so what we'll need to do is we need to go here, here, there should be one right here. I don't know where to go, that one is a default one. Because every time, and this is what goes in right here, it's called convergence. Convergence is talk between, a, a convergence is when a um, router has an updated, totally good list of routes. So it knows, okay, these routes are all good. You have path determination that is figures out which one of these is the best route to go to, and that is dictated by different types of protocols. You have OSPF with it, which is open shortest path first. OSP, yeah, path first, uh, which is the shortest one. However, gets it there the fastest. Uh, and then you have different ones. Some are Cisco proprietary. Some are other things like that. So you guys are going to hello. Uh, you guys are going to get broken up into groups, and you're going to research those. Um, so that's what path determination is. Metric is basically from zero. I don't know what the max is, but it's the um, order of which paths should go. All right. So if this right here, if this path here has a metric of 10, that's going to be preferred over a path that has a metric of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This one has a metric of 42. Both work but you're gonna go with 10 first. Does that make sense? Each path is basically ranked, and what that does is it gets picked by which one ever has the best rank, and the best is the smallest number. Does that make sense? Yeah, I so still didn't explain how this router knows every single router. So, okay, so let's say, all right, so we'll use people instead of routers. So. Um, Sebastian is talking with his family, um, his mom, his dad, and his sister. Jared's talking to um, Sebastian. Jared is talking to his brother, sister, and aunt. And um, Edward is talking to your uncle, your aunt, and your dog. Okay. Right. So you three are all talking, but your dog can't talk to his uh, Sebastian's mom. Right? It has to go through you guys. Make sense? Maybe not your dog. Let's say your aunt wants to talk to Sebastian's <laughs> aunt, right? 
Okay. Oh, all right, you know what, <laughs> Edward, you are now no longer part of the example, <laughs> so so we have, all right, so we're going to have Kristoff, we're going to have Jared, and we're going to have Tommy, I'm going to edit up a little bit, so Tommy's talking to his mom, his dad, you guys talk, this is Jared's brother <laughs> and his sister, you guys are talking, and Kristoff has his his aunt and his uncle, mm, right? Yeah, that's so Christoph's aunt wants to talk to Tommy's dad for whatever reason, right? Mm-hmm. So aunt talks to Christoph. Christoph talks to Jared. Jared talks to Tommy. Tommy talks to his dad. We right? should do it right now. Right? No. <laughs> no, we're not. Oh, wait, you said we were doing. We're telephone. not playing telephone. You said. I did not say we're playing that today. Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of teacher are you? I don't. <laughs> if we get through everything else, we'll okay. Do you guys want to see If you get through everything else, <laughs> right? Okay. So does that make sense? This is. This is. This is. Compu- this is basically how computers work. I have a computer that talks to my router that talks to another router that talks to a router that talks to the computer I want to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, let's say, uh, uh, Christoph's aunt is talking with Tommy's dad, right? And then Jared, for whatever reason, gets sick. Oh my God. And you're no longer at school. Well, luckily, Christoph also talks to (coughs) Sam, who talks to Edward, who talks to Tommy. One, two, three. I'm missing someone. Uh, Sebastian. 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 Okay. Okay. I had two. Okay. So Christoph. So so Christoph's aunt then talks to Sam, who talks to Edward, who talks to Tommy, who talks to Tommy's dad. So convergence is when when this goes down, this router, or I'm sorry, this router finds out, and we're going to go over that in just a minute. It basically sends a hello packet to see if it's still up. So it no longer receives a hello packet from J- uh, from Jared. So what it does is like, okay, I know because I know I'm also connected to Tommy through these two people. Yeah. I'm going to send the information that way. It's a little longer because it has to go through two routers as opposed to one, but it still works. Wait, so- when, when one of these goes down or a, or a route changes, yeah. that change gets sent to all adjacent routers okay. that, that need to know. Okay, they know that that route, that way it doesn't work, but they don't know this way works though, because it never goes this way since it's kind of far. No, each, oh, no, so if, if at all. what, hang on, what's your, what, so what's your question? They never go this route when Jerry was good, right? Correct, so they, they didn't, know, they right? didn't need to. So they, they don't know this. Yeah, they do. How do they know? Because this router uh, advertises what it's connected to, and that goes to this one. This router advertises what it's connected to to this one. This router advertises what it's connected to. So, so because they've all talked to each other, they've built this route. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. Yay or nay? Uh, yay. Okay, they all are talking to each other and they're constantly updating each other on what's going on, yeah. who they're connected to, what's going on. Oh, my dad's out of town, so I'm no longer, you can no longer talk to him. Okay, okay well, what am I going to do with that information? Well, you're going to send it back and say, listen, you can't connect to that computer because he's out of town or it's been disconnected or whatever. Does that make sense? There's constant communication. That's what half the packets are in when you do, when you're analyzing a network. It's just these guys talking, updating stuff and the updating routes. Do have a huge storage memory? The they don't have to have huge because it's not that much information. It's like, here's a destination IP address. Here's the subnet mask. Here is um, uh, a default gateway, and here's the protocol. So it's only a couple bytes of information. So if you have, you know, a gig of information, you can hold a bunch of text. If it, all it is is text, because you know, for an IP address, how many bits are in an IP address? Anyone? Eight, uh, Twenty-four. No. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. 22. 22. So five thirty-two. No. Hey, that's IPv4. I was talking about IPv6. You were what, you were even you were even, was, you were even wrong. Even wrong. wrong. <laughs> 128. There you go. One hundred twenty-eight. So this is one hundred and twenty-eight bytes, no bits, which equals what's one twenty-eight to uh, forty-eight? Sixteen. 
16 bytes, and a, and a gigabyte is a million bytes. So you could hold Ooh. nearly a mil. You could hold 500,000 ish. That's a ton. Oh. Yeah, well, not exactly 500,000, but you could hold a lot of these routes in using only one gig of storage. Um, all right, there's, so. There's more than a thousand bytes in a gigabyte. Or a million bytes in a gigabyte. Oh, that's in a megabyte. You're right. So it's a billion. Thank you. A billion bytes. So you could hold even. You could hold a lot more than that. Oh. So and then <laughs> load balancing. So this is when when routers go down. Um, or when a lot of people are going to are connecting to one internet site from a certain area, they will start going. They'll use different routers. So going back to this right here, let's get rid of yellow. So let's say a lot of people are going. This is now no longer a computer. This is a network. So let's say this is a school, um, and this is next door school. Next school. Wait, Mr. Sultan, what? I have a question. Yeah. So you know how like Comfy Xfinity, they and if you have their Wi-Fi and you connect to that, like if you just walk around and connect to all the other Xfinity like things. Like the default ones? Yeah, but like it's because if you have a hotspot you have a router it's Xfinity, it automatically gives out like another thing for a user to use. Wait, oh, yeah. say that again? They have one yeah. where if you buy it, it's off. yours, and then there's also a second one. So if some random person got the connection, they could connect if they had an Xfinity account. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And like... You can turn it off, but... That's why I don't use Xfinity. They're too late. Yeah, so like, how does that... Because like, like you were saying, you hop around and connect to another thing. And it's so the same... If if I'm understanding what you're saying is, you get a little box thing, right, that generates its own Wi-Fi, right? And as you walk around, if that allows you to connect to other people's Wi-Fi? No, no, like you have your phone. Yeah, your, oh, right. your phone, okay. Your phone, you connect to Wi-Fi. Yeah. Right? And like, you have your Xfinity box. Okay. And that gives out like your personal Wi-Fi. That gives you your Wi-Fi, yeah. Uh, but that box also makes another Wi-Fi like, that's like for customers. Like, oh, like you know, basically a guest network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then if you have an Xfinity account, you can log into it. So like when you walk around and, and if people have like Xfinity things at home. And people don't turn it off. Yeah. So like you can. Basically, you jump on the guest network of anyone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's. No shade. That's kind of cool, but that's kind of yeah. not cool. So you have a Wi-Fi. But like, is yeah. that kind of what you were talking about? No. <laughs> Sorry. You said hopping around, so. Yeah, so, well, let me explain this. So, I have this school, and they're trying to get to YouTube. So, they're going to go to, oops, they're going to go to this router, that router, that router, and that router. This school next door also joins this router, and then it is following this path. But a lot of people are doing that. So you're not, so you're getting a lot of traffic on those things, on those routers. What it will do is it will tell it, okay, when you get, when this router here gets information to go to YouTube, instead of going to this router, what I want you to do is I want you to go to this router and follow that route just to keep it from going crazy, just from overloading to prevent overload of these routers here. So that's what load balancing is. All these routers are all talking to each other at all times, sure. and they're able to transmit this information. Like, hey, stop sending people this way, go around. Kind of like a detour in traffic. So how many packets can go out at the same time? How many packets? I don't know. Depends on whatever they want. It depends on how big the packet is and how much information can be transmitted on a Cat 6. Okay, what's your max one time? Uh, packet? Yeah. Um, I want to say I just over a meg. But I think that might be mag? too big. Megabyte. Might be what a megabyte. I think it's just over a megabyte. Oh, but it takes really short time to send that back, right? You know, I, megabyte is huge. Yeah, that's the maximum that it can send. It doesn't send. I don't think you can get bigger than a megabyte. I know with pinging, you can only send if it's a byte. I think you can only send a kilobyte. Maybe it's a kilobyte. I might be off by a factor of a hundred, but or a thousand. Not a factor. I download, I download <laughs> a one gigabyte game so fast in like 10 minutes. Right, but that's transmission speed. 
not individual packet size. So so if 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 every car on the highway right carries four people, right? Every car carries four people. Doesn't matter. And the maximum speed on the highway is fifty miles an hour. Yeah. You're gonna get x amount of people per per minute right yeah. all right i don't know that number i'm not going to do that um but if the speed limit is 100 you're going to get potentially double that amount yeah. even though the same it's the same information the same number of people are in each car you send them faster so you get more information so that's what's happening when you have a big when you have um cat six or really fast uh, data transmission okay. make sense yeah awesome they just go back and forth really fast. No problem. Say what? Oh, shit. Yeah! 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 <laughs> <laughs> I won't shower that I normally just sleep in class. <laughs> if there was one person to sleep in this class. <laughs> I literally walk out. She's <laughs> like, like a rubs and rocks. <laughs> And then I hear Edward, I won't tell her that. <laughs> Thank you, Edward. So, Edward, what are you going to tell her? So, we, we normally play Halo for the rest of the time. That's not true. That is not true. I, I that's why I'm playing Halo. Thank you. See ya. Party boy. <laughs> oh, 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 all right, well. That was great. Just kidding. Just kidding. Load balance. Okay. <laughs> This stuff you can just read. We're, I want you guys to get the research stuff done real quick. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, we we'll have to get this done quickly. Right? Yeah, so two, four, six. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go over routing information protocol and just really, really quickly. And then what I, I'm going to assign you guys different routing protocols and you guys are going to look those up. So, um, uh, routing information protocol, I'm just going to read it from the screen because I've highlighted it. Uh, dynamic routing protocol meaning the routes periodically exchange or meaning the routers of periodically exchange routes. RIP is classified as a distance vector protocol using router hop count as a metric. RIP permits a maximum of 15 hops to prevent routing loops. Basically if you have 15 routers to get to if you're using router information protocol. Once you've got to 16 hops that packet's deleted and that prevents routing loop so if it gets stuck in between two routers um it doesn't bog down your internet or it doesn't bog down the connection does that make sense why would it get stuck in between who knows so they, what? it's like building a code in case you do this do this but you probably won't but if you do we need to be able to deal with that okay so the package carries information on how many times it's been sent back and forth yeah and that's the hop count. An infinite while loop. Yeah, instead of having an infinite while loop that slows down your computer, you say it can't happen more than 15 times if it does get out of the loop. Um, default time. So the interval, so every 30 seconds, the routing tables are exchanged. So every 30 seconds, this is ex all that information is back, is switched. Like all over the world? Uh, depending on, yeah, basically. It depends on... A bunch of stuff but it's more than once a minute oh so it's a one with a adjacent one right yes so all the this says something yeah this one takes that and says something so this one will eventually know that t is connected to e so every router in the world knows every other router along its path pretty much yeah wow that's incredible like if this one went, so if Christoph went to Sebastian and then went to Stolter. Oh man, what a mess. This one wouldn't really, well no, because it's connected. Maybe if Stolter wants to talk, all right, whatever. We'll do this. We'll do Falinski. Oh man. Right? These know. routers don't know anything about these because they're not connected to it. 
I'm not gonna be able to put that video up. Because <laughs> <laughs> of you. Um. So RIP can only be used in contiguous networks, meaning the networks and route must have the same class network address. So routing information protocol is basically a contained network. It's not going to be going all over the world just because that's just not how it works. All right. I know that was a bad explanation, but I want to get to this. All right. So your activity. Um, do you guys want to pick your own groups or do you want me to pick them? Oh, no, no, you pick them. Uh, I want to do a sound. <laughs> Sam, do you want to? No, I'm kidding. Um, so let's go. Sam, Sebastian, oh, my goodness. Tommy, Edward, Jared, Christoph. Oh, I'm like Christoph out here. Wait, wait, what was that? Oh, yeah. Sam, Sam and Sebastian. Oh, okay. All right, so for Sam and Sebastian, you guys are doing IGRP, Interior Gateway Routing pro Protocol. I want 30 seconds, give or take, uh, information on it. If you want to use only the book, you can, but you also can use, you can also use um, Wikipedia if you want. Oh, that's not a reliable source, sir. Yes, it is. <laughs> not for our English paper, but for what we're doing, it totally is. Uh, oh, yeah. If, if you had to write a paper for me, you could totally use Wikipedia. Stolter's standards are lower, guys. Oh, so what, <laughs> what do you think is what do you think is? Yeah, but they can like edit stuff and then and it gets changed it. almost immediately. But you yeah, don't know that. What yes, do I do. Look at it. Yes, I do. Fine. Use the sources at the bottom of Wikipedia. I guess okay. we're really not going to be using. So Wikipedia. what are? <laughs> All right, Sebastian. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna randomly cut out of me talking. This might just be a private one. Um. <laughs> Sam and Sebastian, you have OSPF, Open Shortest Path First Routing Protocol. No, you said we had the IG whatever. Oh, then you have OSPF. Oh, okay, Christoph. Okay. And. Um. Yeah. So maybe sit by them. You guys have EIGRP, Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. Yeah, that's right. Okay. What? You 